Welcome everyone to another phrasal verbs and idiom lesson. Today's topic is all about food. So I hope you're not hungry, otherwise your stomach will be rumbling. Uh, and as always in this lesson, we'll be practicing all of the skills. So aside from learning phrasal verbs and common idiomatic expressions, you'll also be practicing all of the language skills, um, speaking, writing, reading, and listening. So I hope you're, you're ready and I hope you're focused for today's lesson. Um, uh, turn off your telephone, try to avoid getting distracted, uh, set aside a period of time. If it's 30 minutes, if it's an hour, uh, try to allocate the, a specific amount of time uh, to learning, which will ultimately make your learning much more effective. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so on the first slide, you are going to see four pictures of different foods from around the world. Um, just before we jump into the topic, uh, I would like to say that I, I am of Italian heritage, um, so it's in my DNA to enjoy eating. Um, for me, uh, I, I grew up uh, with Italian relatives, and so I was exposed to Italian customs. And if you know anyone Italian or if you are familiar with the culture, uh, you will know and understand that or you'll you'll know and understand how important food is for Italians uh, and not only food just for eating, but for enjoyment to socialize, to bring family together and to share moments uh, together. Um, so food goes far beyond just uh, what you put into your body. Um, it, it's a lot more than that. There are a lot of social elements connected to it. Uh, but just to give you some background, um, you know, in Italy, when I when I go back there to visit family, uh, we have a great time. We eat a lot of food, big quantities, um, a lot of variation. Um, whether it's uh, meat, fish, of course, pasta, pizza, um, different types of vegetables prepared in lots and lots of different ways, followed by fruit and desserts and coffee. Um, it's really, really incredible. And I think one remarkable thing about the Italian cuisine is they always try to use uh, fresh produce. Um, so where possible, they, they try to use um, the fresh ingredients rather than frozen or prepackaged food uh, where possible. Things are changing today because even in Italy now, um, in a family, traditionally, most people have to work. Now it's no longer, um, it's no longer the woman staying at home as it used to be many, many years ago who traditionally would cook and provide for the family. Um, you know, today that's very, very different. So it, it, the culture is changing there, but people still enjoy eating delicious food. Um, so anyway, let's, uh, let's move on to the first slide then. And now you should be able to see uh, four pictures. Okay, what I'd like you to do, um, you can pause the video and just practice describing what you see in each photo. Uh, try to name the ingredients. Try to guess what dish they are preparing. And try to guess what each photo has in common. There is one common uh, element that connects all of these photos. So what do you think that is? Okay, try to understand what that is. I will give you a clue that each photo is from a different country. So each dish is of a, dish of a different nationality. Okay, so I'll give you a few minutes to do that. Practice speaking out loud, uh, even to yourself. I think, it, I think it's really, really good practice. I think it's really uh, underestimated, uh, as I'm sure you've heard me say before. So pause the video, practice speaking, and then we'll go through them together. Okay, so you may or may not have been able to name uh, everything in each of these photos. Uh, I'll go through them briefly with you. So in the top left-hand corner, I can see a uh, roast chicken. 
Okay, roast chicken. Perhaps make a note of the vocabulary as I go through them with you, um, if they're new for you. Um, so this is a roast chicken cooked in the oven uh, with some roast potatoes and perhaps some mini sausages, uh, I believe. Um, on the other, on the surrounding dishes, we've got an array of vegetables, which looks like slices of carrots uh, and capsicum or peppers, uh, red and green. Uh, perhaps there's cucumber there and celery as well, with some kind of dip uh, in the middle. Um, next to that, on the left, we've got a, a, a dish of salmon uh, with some sliced lemon on the side. And then what looks like a dessert, those are minced pies. Okay, in the next photo, uh, on the right, top top row on the right, uh, we, it looks like we've got two people, or three people actually, uh, helping each other to prepare this dish. Very interesting. Um, we've got some red capsicum there, uh, followed by some what looks like green olives. Then we have perhaps it could be minced meat. Um, perhaps the, the, there's some black ingredients in a container there, which I think could be raisins. Raisins. Um, and then it looks like what they're doing is taking the ingredients, putting them in the middle of a type of dough. Uh, dough, which is obviously made from flour and water, which they then close up and then they wrap it up in the green banana leaves. Okay, so they've wrapped them up in green banana leaves and they put uh, a string around them to actually sort of pick them up and uh, take them in and out of the water. Uh, which, yes, because they are boiled, you see. So um, these are actually called ayacas and they're from Venezuela. Uh, and other, I think other countries in South America also use uh, use this food uh, traditionally, probably in Colombia, I would imagine, um, as those countries have a lot of similarities. Okay, so directly underneath that photo, uh, very, very interesting dish, very big uh, dish with uh, lots of different colors. They, it, it appears that we have different types of minced meat, um, which are surrounded by different sauces. We've got sort of orange sauce, yellow sauces. Um, we've got some vegetables there, which look like asparagus. Um, perhaps there's, uh, perhaps that's spinach there as well uh, that I can see. And then we have slices of something that looks similar to bread. Um, this isn't quite a bread. I've actually tried uh, a variation of this dish. And it's a, it's a very spongy type of, of bread. I'm not quite sure what the name of it is uh, specifically, uh, but this is an Ethiopian dish. Okay. Uh, and then finally, on the, the, in the final photo, we've got uh, a tray with, with different bowls and with some crunchy pita bread on the side. So the bowls look like they contain, they look like kind of soups or sauces uh, with perhaps vegetables and potatoes in them. Um, I think in the bottom left corner, we have chickpeas and uh, some chopped up perhaps onion and capsicum there. Uh, on the left of that, we have perhaps what looks like a mixed, a mixed salad perhaps. And we have a, a green sauce, which, uh, could possibly be mint, um, but I'm not too sure, to be honest. And this final dish here is uh, an Arabic dish, usually eaten in the Middle East. So what do you think is the connection between all of these dishes? Well, if you haven't guessed, or perhaps you're not familiar with these dishes and in these countries, uh, they are all traditional Christmas dishes from each region. Um, so the first photo being a traditional British Christmas dish. Um, maybe you've you've seen this before. Uh, you know, in 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 the UK we usually have um, a turkey or a chicken uh, at Christmas. Uh, we roast it in the oven, and we usually roast all of the potatoes and the vegetables that go with it. 
what is missing from this photo is um, a meat sauce that is usually used, um, which is called gravy, which we pour over the meat and vegetables. Gives it some flavor, some moisture. Uh, it's very, very tasty. Uh, and then you've got some dessert there with the minced pies. Um, so a sweet dessert for afterwards. Um, yes, yeah, so they, they're all Christmas dishes. So what do you eat in your country uh, at Christmas? Or what traditional dishes uh, does your country have? I would love to, to read about them. Uh, please post in the forum. Uh, take, ju take just a few minutes to, to tell me perhaps the ingredients, the, the name of the dish, uh, perhaps how you eat it. Um, you know, in different cultures we eat in different ways. Um, it could be as one whole meal or is it more of a snack? Do you share it with other people? Do you eat with your hands? Do you eat with cutlery, with a knife and fork? Um, so I'd love to hear um, your sort of traditional um, food culture. Uh, so please write to us in the forum. So now moving on to the first activity of the lesson, um, we're starting with some collocations uh, today. We've got some nouns on the left and on the right we have some verbs and some adjectives. Uh, as we often do with collocations, we have to find the correct combination. So the first one has been done for you. Okay, so we have foil and we have the verb wrap. Okay, um, actually, when we put these words together, uh, wrap actually becomes uh, an adjective. So it becomes foil wrapped with a double P, foil wrapped, um, which is simply when we wrap uh, usually a food item in tin foil to, to preserve it. Yeah, we usually put it in the fridge um, so it, it stays edible for, for a few extra days. Yeah, so foil wrapped. Okay, um, let's see if you can now complete the matching. I'll give you a couple of minutes, pause the video and see if you can find the, the right collocation pairs. Good luck. Okay, welcome back. I hope that wasn't uh, difficult for you. Didn't take you too long. Um, as I always say with collocations, you either know them or you don't. You can try to guess. Uh, sometimes you can get, uh, you can have an intuition um, for them, but you know they are. If you don't know them, they're quite difficult. Um, so it doesn't matter if you don't know them. I'm now going to go through the answers with you, and then we're going to look at the definitions. So I'm not going to show you the answers on the screen. But I'm going to say them. So it's a little listening activity for you, and and just write them down. Uh, and, and tick them off as you've got them correct or not. So the first one, as we said, was foil wrap or foil, foil wrapped. Second one is to spoon feed, spoon feed. Third one is knife edge, knife edge. The next one is gold plated. Next one is sugar coat, sugar coat. Flesh eating, flesh eating and oven proof oven proof. Okay, those are your answers. Now we will move on to understanding the definitions, what these are, what these mean and how, how we use them. So if you look at the next slide, we have the collocations in the left column and we have the definitions in the right column. The definitions are in the incorrect order. Okay, so these are not the correct definitions. So what I would like you to do now is read the definitions and match them to the correct collocation. Again, some of them you'll be able to guess. Some will be intuitive. Uh, others may be a little bit difficult. I would go through them and use a process of elimination to make the best guess that you can. And then we'll check them together afterwards. Okay, good luck. Okay, so here are the answers on the next slide. So foil wrap, as I previously told you, is a material that we use to cover and protect and keep food uh, fresh. Uh, usually we put it into storage, like a fridge, for example, or it could be just a simple cupboard, tin foil or aluminium. 
uh, as it's also known in, in some parts. Next one is spoon feed. This is very, very interesting. So when you spoon feed someone or if someone is spoon fed, that is when someone does everything for another person. OK, we often use this uh, with children, you know, uh, young children that aren't obviously independent and cannot do things for themselves. They rely on their parents. So their parents will do everything for them, prepare their food, wash them, get them dressed, um, you know, tidy their rooms, all of these kinds of things. Um, so we, we often use this when perhaps children become teenagers and they're at the age where they are more independent and they can do things for themselves, but perhaps, uh, perhaps they're lazy, perhaps they haven't been encouraged to do things for themselves by their parents. So they're a little bit spoiled, perhaps they always get their own way. And as a result, we, we define that as uh, spoon feeding, yeah? doing everything for your children, um, which doesn't help them become uh, independent or responsible. OK, next one is knife edge uh, on. Usually we use it with the preposition on on a knife edge. Um, it's a very tense situation, can be a it can be a dangerous uh, situation. OK, so if you think about a knife is a sharp, dangerous object and the edge is the is the sharp side. Yeah. Uh, so the edge can be like the border as well. But when we talk about a knife, it's it's the blade that cuts. OK, so try to remember it that way. Knife being dangerous on the knife edge can be a dangerous or very tense situation. OK, next one is gold plated. Uh, this is quite simple, and uh, perhaps you've already heard of this. Uh, Gold-plated objects are items that have been covered in a layer of gold. So it's not uh, solid gold, and it won't be a lot of gold. It's just a thin coating um, of gold. Uh, we can replace gold with other um, materials like silver. It can be silver-plated, bronze-plated, copper-plated. Yeah, so we can replace um, the noun in this case. And then we have sugar coat. This is another interesting collocation and uh, phrasal verb, really, to sugar coat a story is when somebody tells you a story or tells you something, some information, but perhaps leaves out some key details um, to avoid hurting your feelings, to avoid offending you. Um, so it's not directly lying there and their intention isn't to harm you. It's precisely the opposite. Um, they, they do not want to offend you, so they don't give you all of the details of the story. Okay. Um, so, for example, and one example would be a doctor giving a patient some bad news. So perhaps instead of giving them all of the bad news, they would refrain from giving all the details uh, to perhaps give the patient some hope um, or to, to try to encourage them that um, all is not lost or the situation is not as bad as it seems. Yeah, they are sugarcoating the diagnosis. For example, okay. The next one is flesh eating. Um, so this is usually used with animals um, that perhaps eat other animals, carnivores. Uh, flesh is meat, but flesh is usually meat off the body, uh, perhaps uncooked meat. Um, but essentially, flesh is just simply meat. Um, so a flesh-eating creature is, uh, is an animal uh, that simply eats meat. It's carnivorous. And finally, we have oven-proof. Oven-proof. So if an object is oven-proof, it can be used in the oven. It can be used at high temperatures, uh, often used in baking, for example. Um, proof, when we use that with other types of nouns, uh, similar to plated, um, takes on a different uh, meaning in the sense of uh, waterproof. Yeah? So when an object is resistant to the water, uh, windproof is the same. So when we have, uh, when we have a noun plus proof, 
It means resistant uh, to the noun. Yeah. Okay, well done. Let's move on to the to the next slide where we've got some of these collocations in practice. Okay. Uh, you should be able to see seven phrases on your screen. Pause the video and read each phrase and check if it's correct or incorrect for any reason whatsoever. Okay, there may be different types of errors. So find the error and if you find it, please correct it and write down the correct form. I'll see you in a few minutes.